gaming mat here. So I uh, wanted to do this video a long time ago, a few weeks ago, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe it was a few weeks ago actually. And you know, I probably did a video like this before. It's funny to me how it's 2016 and we see a lot of these old school wrestlers who not only made an appearance in the WWE, but they seem to stay for a very long time. What I mean is, um, two years ago, you had the New Age Outlaws, Road Dog, Jesse James, like a this was uh, they returned to do this uh, the, to do the Monday Night Raw 1000 anniversary in uh, August, actually. So they came back with DX. And everything was good, but then I started watching, and they came back. Uh, two years ago, and then they became WWE champions again. And the promise that they came back and they were better than ever, blah blah blah. The Dudley Boys came back last year, and the WWE didn't do anything with them. The WWE did not do anything with Dud the Dudleys. The Dudleys lost. They won maybe one match. They did not lose. Uh, or they did not win a lot. Just one match. They lost. Basically the entire time they came back, they lost every match. And it, get, and it really gets to me because you have the WWE guys who... Um, believed so much in the New Age Outlaws. And then you had the guys that were a bit younger, not that much younger, but younger. And you basically squashed them. They came back into the WWE and you didn't give them any chance at the title. I don't know what was that all about. I don't know. So they basically retired. Now, why, whether they're going to go back to TNA, which I, I hope that's not the case. They said they were retiring from wrestling. I don't know. Um, but we'll, we'll find, I'll find out. Because I do still watch TNA. And unfortunately, and with all the storylines they have there. My point of the matter is I look at these people, I look at these legends, and I'm all for nostalgia, but you bring them back and they don't do anything. They don't do anything spectacular, they're just there. And I understand you watch it, uh, watch these guys at Wrestlemania and you have like a fallback um, moment and then Ron Simmons would come out of it and he would say damn and all that other stuff but now you're getting to the point now where you had the Dudleys uh, you have Bob Backlund now Bob Backlund he came in when he came back, I should say, when I first started watching wrestling back in late 92. And he was still young enough that I think they took him a little bit more seriously, seriously as a wrestler. And uh, he became WWF champion and everything else. And, you know, he it was great and whatever, you know. And then he left for a really long time. But then he came back, you know, just a beat heats later. But then he came back again. 
and this time using him in the dumbest angle ever in making Titus O'Neil great. And I'm not sure why they're doing it. I, you know, they're running out of ideas. I don't know, but it's the worst excitement ever. And they're, you know, he's basically out there looking like an idiot. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like how he carries Darren Young on Celebration. I don't like it. I just do not. If it goes somewhere, oh, you know, whatever. I think the main thing in this video that I wanted to point out that it really pisses me off. So, you know, I watch classic Cruiserweight, uh, Cruiserweight Championship Wrestling. Or, yeah. Cruiserweight Wrestling Championship. There it is. So you got these, you know, they got these Cruiserweight guys from different countries. You have at least a few of them from New Japan, which I think is awesome. You've got uh, Frederick Alexander from Ring of Honor. You've got a lot of these guys. You even have Tyson Dukes, which I thought was in the company, but he's not. No, he never was. So you got all these guys, and it's interesting because one person that stands out is the reason why I'm making this video is Brian Kendrick, or the Brian Kendrick. And the thing that really bothers me is that here's a man who came to WWE in 2003 and, and for somehow and for some reason became one of the people who was full of himself. I guess he had some substance issues. And then, for a while after he left, um, went to TNA. I think they canned his ass. But what pisses me off is that, okay, so he comes back after a year, a few years, and he's 37 years old. And he's playing like, if I were to lose the competition for the class of cruiserweights, then that's it for me. That's it. I'm done. I, I can't, I, I don't, I can't do this anymore, or however he put it, I'm retiring, I'm, you know, this is my last chance, blah, blah, blah. And I listened to that, and for some reason that pissed me off. Because, by the way, he lost. And then, you know, they had, you know, Brian Danielson, who, the Daniel Bryan, who, um, trained Kendrick, and they came out, and they embraced, and hugged, and cried, and whatever, you know, that's the way it is. What pisses me off is that it takes a long time for these people to come to the ring, and to make a name for themselves. You got a guy in, like, Tajiri who's 45 years old and can still move and whatever. I don't know what makes somebody say this is my last chance and I, I you know, I'm not going to wrestle no more if I lose. I don't understand that because Brian Kendrick is 37 years old. He's still young enough. He's still got it, you know. He still has that in him. Whether it was just a a thing that he said, and, and whether he's going to go off and do something else, I don't know. I don't know what that was, but that really pissed me off because you have a lot of these guys coming back and trying to prove themselves again. And unfortunately, you get a lot of the legends that are way past their prime or whatever, and they were in their 50s or early 60s. Like, Ric Flair came back in 2001 in his early 50s and basically wrestled until he was 60. 
which you know I I don't know I just really that bothered me a long for a long time seeing these older guys go at it I don't know why but it just really pissed me off because you know make room for the younger generation but when I look at Brian Kendrick I still see somebody that can actually go out there and still wrestle so the fact that he said this is my last chance and if I lose that's it for me that pisses me off because there's still a lot of potential there I think anyways I don't know but then you got guys coming back like Rhino and uh, uh, Rhino and the Headbangers Mosh and Thrash who are not back I don't think they're on this this week I don't even know if they're fully back but I know that there was hype that they were going to be on Smackdown and then they came last week it's uh, very interesting to me to see what's going to happen with that or with Rhino for that matter because you know he was a guy that whether he just came back because they're releasing the Hardcore Championship DVD I don't know uh, I can't wait to see what happens and as far as I know him and Heath Slater uh, who also beat the Headbangers uh, last week this week they advanced to the take team championship so it'll be interesting to see what happens but uh, yeah you know I'm all for nostalgic I just think that when these people come back yeah Ricky Steamboat you know me Chris Jericho's dream come true years ago and faced him at Backlash. I think it was Backlash. It was right around the time, well, whatever, it was right around the time it's Legends versus Chris Jericho. But, uh, yeah. That's all I have to say. Uh, nothing special, but it is what it is. And, uh, if headbangers are, in fact, here to stay for a while, at least put the belts on them. Alright, bye.